Okay, so what we're doing today is we're reviewing the graphics file formats, what you need to know. So you should have your um, file formats assignment open and ready to edit and be prepared to answer questions. Uh, you can either answer questions by unmuting or you can message in the chat. Okay, so this is what we're discussing and reviewing today during the session. Okay, so the first thing you need to know, now this was in the vocabulary section of your assignment. These were not words that you had to actually write down, but if you wanna add any of these things to your notes, you can. Let me also say this, you will have a formative assessment quiz um, and a summative assessment quiz on file formats. It will not be any time right away. The assessment will more than likely be NCTLS assessment, but I will allow you to use notes for portions of your assessments. So that's a really good reason to make sure you do your work and use your vocabulary and you can have your notes in front of you um, as you're working on some of the assessments, okay? Because some of it is more application. So it's okay if you refer to your notes. Okay, so lossless um, is allowing original data to be, whoops, hold on, let me go back. Let me admit this person, hold on. Okay, all right, is uh, using the original data um, and it does have some compression, but it's the preferred method for file formats. So uh, TIFF and some of the other file formats that we're gonna discuss are lossless. So kind of think of it this way, lossless means it's not losing data. That means you're not losing anything in the file format itself. Okay, lossy means that when the image is compressed, that some of the data or some of the pixels can be lost. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example or like kind of just visually. So does everybody see this piece of paper that I'm holding up? Can y'all see that? Okay, it's a blank sheet of paper. Okay, this is kind of an example of like lossy and lossless. So let's say that this is my file Okay, and it's a beautiful file. Does everybody see the file that I made? All right, so this is my file. Now, this file, if I save it, so if I open this file, let's just use the example of Photoshop. So if I open this file in Adobe Photoshop and I save it as a TIFF or as some of the other formats that we're gonna discuss today that are in a lossless format, the file is going to remain intact. So I open, save, open, save, open. Does the file still look like it's intact? Every time I opened and saved, it looked fine, correct? Now with lossy data, what happens is this is a JPEG, okay? And if I hold this up and it's a JPEG file, when I go to edit the file, okay, let's say I'm gonna edit, and then I'm going to save the JPEG as a JPEG, okay? So what's happening when I do that is it is literally taking data away. You see the holes in the file? So I'm holding the data in my hand and it is literally taking some of the data when it compresses and saves that image away. Okay, so then I've saved the JPEG one time. Now I go open that same JPEG. Does everybody see that JPEG that I opened again? I make a few more edits. So let's say I want to do that and edit the file and I save it again. Okay, well, what happens when I save the JPEG as a JPEG again, which is a lossy format, then what happens is I have now discarded more data or more pixels because every time I open and save, I am losing data. Now, this data, if you can see this data in my hand, these are the pieces of the pixels that are going into the garbage can. I'm throwing these away into the trash can. Those are gone forever. You can never retrieve those pixels again. Okay, so these are two things that I want you to understand as we're discussing um, file formats today. So does that kind of help you understand lossy and lossless? So lossless is gonna preserve the um, file structure. Lossy, you're going to lose data or lose information. Okay, everybody give me a thumbs up if you think you kind of understand Lossy and lossless. Okay, you can give me digital thumbs up if your cameras are off. Yep. Okay, good. So that makes sense to you so far. 
Okay, so the next slide, uh, we're gonna discuss JPEG first. All right, now JPEG is one that you're probably pretty familiar with. Again, nodding heads, thumbs up. You've seen JPEGs before, you've used JPEGs, you're probably familiar with them. JPEGs are gonna come from your phone, from your pictures. Uh, where else are JPEGs gonna come from? They're gonna come from a digital SLR camera, like a Canon or a Nikon. So these are going to be native, which we're gonna talk about that word in a moment, native to a digital SLR or a camera. So JPEGs are most often used for photography. Now, um, you may see JPG or JPEG, those are used interchangeably. Um, most of those formats, you're gonna see them um, as the same thing. Now, when you talk about JPEGs, uh, I want you to have kind of pros and cons on your sheet. So that means kind of tell me like why you would use one format over another. That's the whole objective of this lesson is starting to understand what are the benefits to using this particular file format versus another because as a graphic designer, your job is going to be, I need to know how to interpret that information to best fit the needs of my client. So is the file going to web? Is it going to print? Is it going on a billboard? Is it going to a cereal box package? Um, is it gonna be used for social media and YouTube? So you need to understand those things because that's how file formats relate to you being able to uh, import, export, and navigate among those items. So understand pros and cons of when you would use one over the other. So a pro for a JPEG, one, it's very readily available. It's often used. Uh, it does have high detail and good image quality. It does have a lot of color options. So you do get a broad range of colors which is why it's used for photography. Um, and it can compress images. Now that can be a pro or a con. Now, if you look down at the cons, one of the things is it does not support transparency. Okay, so let me ask real quick, who would like to chime in? What does it mean when I say transparency? Uh, like if it's like clear, very clear or Mm -hmm. Clear is a good word to use. So basically that means that the background of the image, so like if I take this piece of paper that we just saved and I wave this behind my head, this would be transparent because I'm physically changing the background because it's clear and there's nothing there. A JPEG will not hold transparency. So that means if it has a white background or a black background or trees in the background or cars in the background, those things cannot be uh, changed or edited on the fly. You would have to actually go into Photoshop and edit those images to change it. So basically it means it's a flattened image, it's a compressed image, and it will not preserve transparency. Now it does not work well for logos and icons. So again, if you have logos, you know, that you're wanting to design or like some kind of little artwork or, you know, a Nike logo or a logo for your company that you want to put on a water bottle, or on the side of a car, then typically JPEG is not gonna be your best option for that. And we're gonna talk about why. Um, so it's usually used more for photography and multicolor and gradient images rather than high contrast images. Okay, um, and you will lose detail saving JPEGs because it is a lossy compression. Okay, so let me ask you this question. What is compression? Who wants to volunteer? When you say you can press a file, what are you doing? Are you making it smaller to fit into a different type of um, save method? Yes, that's exactly what you're doing. So when you have compression, you're compressing a file to make it fit into a certain format or a certain um, place. So for example, I don't know if you've noticed, like when you try to upload videos or like, let's use Instagram as an example. So you know how you're limited on a certain amount of video time for Instagram? Is everybody familiar with that? Um, that is a compression issue. Um, you may not be able to send an email that's if the file is over 100 megabytes. So those are compression issues. So sometimes in, or in order to send things or import or export, you must have 
files compressed in order to make them work within certain formats. Okay, so understand that's what we're referring to with compression. Okay, JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Expert Group. That's what the actual uh, JPEG stands for. So just remember it's primarily used for photography. Okay, is everybody good with that one? Um, okay, so we can move on to the next one. Did you have a question? Did, um, Nathan, did you have a question or? Uh, no, I didn't have a question. I was just gonna log off because I had to go to um, Spitz's, uh, Ms. West's speech class. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And I'm recording this so you can watch it later if you need to. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so then, okay, so these are not in your assignment, but you may wanna just kind of make a note. So if you wanna kind of add these to your notes or if you just wanna kind of listen and make a mental note of these, and most people aren't familiar with these two different formats. Uh, how many of you have iPhones? Give me a give me a thumbs up or hand raise or something. How many of you have iPhones? Okay, if you are an iPhone user, and typically it has to be an iPhone that's usually like about a 10 or higher, then this is affecting you. So if you're an iPhone user, there's a new format. Um, that is called high efficiency image format, which is an HEIC format. Now, the way I explain file formats is it's not like fashion. Fashion changes very rapidly, correct? Like season to season, there's changes in fashion. I would use file formats as more like car models. So, you know, there may be a Mustang from 1950 or 1960 that has changed to a different uh, model you know, by the 70s or the 80s, but then you have new Mustangs for the 2000 decade. So file formats do change. Uh, JPEG has not existed forever. It has uh, not existed even since I started teaching. Uh, JPEG has probably existed your entire life, more than likely that you've known JPEG as long as you can remember. But file formats do change and they do evolve. So what you may be using today, 10 years from now, you may not be using any, any longer. There may be a new format. Um, so I just want you, but it's usually like decades. It's not like season to season or year to year that some of these files are gonna change. Um, HEIC is a new format that Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator will not yet recognize HEIC, it will not open it. So we had some issues in the spring where students in the art classes were photographing their artwork with their phones. And then we were trying to upload those photos for the lit mag and they were photographing an HEIC because it's the default on your phone. And you may not realize that you're photographing in that format. So in order for you to be able to import those images into other things, you have to convert them to JPEG. Now that may also be why some of you may have had issues, which I didn't think to tell you this before, but if you were having issues getting your photos to upload into Adobe Spark, it could have been the HEIC format, could have been causing your problem. So I will share this with you later, this uh, PowerPoint, but the, I've got instructions here and a link at the bottom of how to convert because I actually went in and converted my phone so that my photos come out as JPEGs automatically rather than the HEIC. So I don't have to do file conversion, but you can convert them. So if you do want to convert um, your, um, files, you can do that. Okay, now have any of you ever heard of RAW? Usually that's kind of a format most people aren't familiar with, but have any of you heard of it before? Not really. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not seeing a, a big applause for that. Okay, so does anybody know where RAW comes from? It comes Pictures. Yep, from pictures. It comes from this. It comes from a digital camera. And the only way you can have a raw file is through a digital SLR. Typically, uh, what we call point and shoot cameras or phones typically do not have the raw capability. So you would go into your menu items um, here and then you would change uh, the settings to be able to allow for uh, the quality. So I went to the quality. I don't know if you can see that. It may be hard to see, but it has a 
little words on there where it says raw. So we're going to talk about this in the third level class. If you sign up for the third semester, um, we do a whole big unit on photography and lighting and digital cameras, and you'll get to use the cameras in here, but you can shoot uh, raw if you want to. So raw is a native file. It comes from a digital camera. So what would be the benefit to a raw file. So if you look over here, you can see that there is a clarity difference. You can see the difference between the JPEG and the raw. Uh, most of these cameras can shoot JPEG and raw. Uh, you can set it to do both, but you can edit photos similar to the way you would in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop, um, and they call that non-destructive. So in other words, if you look at this little image here, that means when you open a raw file, you get little sliders to be able to adjust like the exposure, you can make it black and white. Um, and you can do all of this without having to go to a separate application and without having to resave a file. So that means non-destructive means I can edit directly in the image, adjust if the lighting conditions were not good, make the adjustments and never have to open and save a different file. Okay. So everybody nodding heads, thumbs up, y'all understand so far? Okay, now what would be the bad part? So if you go, well, that's really cool. I can edit, I get better quality images. Uh, what are we discussing when we talk about the file? What do you think would be a disadvantage to a RAW? Does anybody have a guess? Everything might not be able to process it because it's um, very high definition. Uh -huh. That's exactly right. Because of the quality of the image and how, and what it's leading to is like file size and software, not everything can open a raw file. Everything can pretty much open a JPEG. And you, so you wouldn't be able to process those images the same way that you would a JPEG. Okay, now, does everybody see where I'm opening the end of this camera? And this is an SD card. Hopefully most of you are familiar with an SD card. Okay, so when we talk about file compression, do you understand that these have limits on how much they can store? Does everybody understand that? Okay, so this one is a 32 gigabyte card. Now, please do not quote me on this. I'm just making this stuff up as I say how many you can actually fit on a card. But let's say, for example, you shoot RAW and you want it to shoot RAW and JPEG and you have this card in your camera, then file sizes for RAW are gonna be much larger. So you may only be able to shoot eight photos. That's why I said, don't quote me on that. I'm just making it up. Eight photos to store to that SD card. Okay, well then what do you have to do if you wanna shoot more? That means you have to go buy a larger SD card, which costs money, which you may or may not have. So a larger SD card will save more, but then you're investing money in larger file sizes. So does everybody understand that's kind of a pro and a con? Whereas if I go, okay, I can't afford to go buy a 256 gigabyte SD card, right? Which is about, you know, hundred and some odd dollars. Instead, I can use a 32, shoot only JPEG, and I can store maybe 32 or 48 images at a compressed resolution. Does that make sense what I'm saying so far? So that's why when we're talking about file sizes and formats and compression, it all matters of do you have a place to store it? How much cloud storage are you willing to pay for? How big is your hard drive on your computer? Um, how large is the SD card that you're using? What kind of phone, like even your phone storage? Like some of you, if you have the minimum capability for storage, like you have an eight gig iPhone, then you're not going to be able to store, you know, how your phone will fill up and you've got too many videos and pictures on there and then you can't upload things. Whereas if you have a phone that has 256 gigs, then you're going to obviously be able to store more video and more photos. Okay, so kind of thumbs up. Does everybody sort of understand all that before we move on? Okay. All right. So the next slide, let me get my mouse back over here. Okay. So those are just kind of the things. Okay, now this one is one y'all should be pretty familiar with. Okay, this is either a GIF or a GIF potato potato. All right, so I, you know, I kind of say it different ways, I think, depending on what kind of mood I'm in. But this stands for graphic interchange format. Uh, it is a file extension. It's the second most common use format. It's one of the older file formats. It's been around uh, for quite a while. 
Uh, it is perfect for animation, obviously, for little animated GIFs. You've heard of that. These are even little GIFs, you know, like when you're sending your memes to your friends on your iPhones and stuff and you need to uh, send these on social media. Um, they pretty much work with any type of either animation or flat images. Um, it's pretty well used for web and print. Make sure you kind of make notes about those things too, about which file fa formats are better used for print versus web. Does everybody understand kind of the difference? Print means in your physical world, like if you were gonna print notepads, for example, versus web would be if you're uploading something to a website or to social media or to YouTube. So um, now one of the disadvantages to using a GIF is that um, these file sizes are larger than file formats like PNGs and JPEGs. So these file um, sizes are gonna be larger and less compressed. Okay, is everybody good with that one? That one you should be pretty familiar with. Okay, PNG. All right, let's move to PNG. Now, the benefit of PNG, and it stands for Portable Network Graphics File, is that it will support transparency. So I put an image on here of the Twitter logo with the little, these little um, squares, or it looks like a checkerboard. That means transparent background. So you'll see that in Adobe Photoshop uh, when we get into there. Now, PNG can be used for web or print. PNG is starting to be used more often than it used to be. It's kind of becoming a more common uh, file format. Um, it is good for logos. Um, it, it's kind of the competitor in a lot of ways to JPEGs now, but it will preserve more vector art, whereas JPEG is raster. So you're looking at your raster vector compare and contrast. So JPEGs are raster, PNGs are vector. So sometimes it can hold a little bit higher image quality um, than say a JPEG would. Uh, but again, these files can be larger in size than JPEGs because JPEGs are more compressed, especially if you're using it for the web. Okay, questions about PNG? Okay, all right, so now this file format, so whatever you need to do on your end, either highlight it, make it a different color, make it bold, uh, you need to kind of focus on PDF. All right, PDF stands for Portable Document Format. Now PDFs are primarily used for print. They will support high resolution, they will um, support multiple pages, which the other formats will not do. So we just talked about JPEG and the compression. You can't save a magazine, for example, as a JPEG. You can save an image as a JPEG. You can't save um, a 64 <clears throat> page document as a GIF or a GIF. Okay, that, that's not what those formats are used for. So PDF is primarily for page documents it is accessible anywhere regardless of the software that you have available and it is the one that I will ask you in this class you will use the most often. So out of all the other formats I would say 80% of what I'm going to ask you to turn in and submit to me even out of Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop um, and InDesign are going to be converting files to PDFs. Uh, now you do have access to embed fonts so that means fonts come in crisp and clear and preserved within PDFs. So that's the reason it's kind of the, this is the preferred format for printers, for graphic design that is gonna be printed. And you see, I call this the magic number. So if you look up here on the, um, on the uh, PowerPoint, that it says 300 DPI. Does everybody see that? 300 DPI. So DPI stands for dots per inch. So it is a vector supported application or file format. You can control what you can edit and what you cannot. So therefore, if I wanna send you a PDF and I wanna limit you being able to edit or copy anything out of that document because of copyright, I can do that. I can also send you a PDF that has 
what they call editable fields. That doesn't mean like you're eating them, you're actually editing um, so that you can actually type in like answers to questions. You can type in, say if it's a contract to purchase a house or an insurance policy, you can actually type in information. Have some of you heard of the new e-sign? Have y'all heard of that? Like where everything is starting to where you basically can have a tablet or a phone and you can physically sign legal documents now directly into the document. Okay, so e-sign is through PDFs. So you can create e-sign documents um, and still have legal documents uh, for things, you know, like purchasing homes and cars, things that would go to court, like things that are um, um, like kind of official in or through a PDF option. Okay, so again, high resolution, vector supported, will allow multiple pages, that's a key, and it's accessible anywhere, anytime, to anyone, regardless of the software they have on their computer. Some of you have probably downloaded PDFs before from online resources. Okay, now a TIFF. So now this is, uh, it stands for Tagged Image Format File. You will see it sometimes as TIF or TIFF. Both of those are used interchangeably. This is an older file format. You can see it was created in 1986. Um, it was created when we were still scanning a lot of documents, uh, artwork that was drawn by hand before everything became as digital as it is now. This is, if you wanna kind of think of it in your head this way, that is the equivalent to a JPEG. It's just an older format. So a TIFF is an older file format than a JPEG. It is raster based, but the difference is, is that TIFFs still will preserve more image quality or better image quality than a JPEG, um, but it has a larger file size because it's not compressing the images quite as much. Um, it, you will see a TIFF every now and then, but you're not gonna see it in a lot of common used um, online versions it's going to be more for old print versions and if you're working with like an old school printer um, they may ask to still have tiffs provided to them or to use tiffs for printing okay now is everybody good with tiff it is used for photography it is used with photoshop okay now eps again this is an older format that is not used as often now i took off on the initial document that i gave you there was BMP on there, which we're not going to discuss um, right now, and PostScript, which we're going to talk about later. Um, I actually have you learn about and create PostScript files in the level two class, the graphic design and production. So hopefully if you guys stay with me even through this virtual um, you know, craziness that we have right now and come back to my level two class, hopefully, which will be face to face and in this classroom, you'll get to do all the production. I will teach you how to create postscript files and we'll talk more about BMP um, in the second level class, but I kind of push that to level two. Um, so EPS stands for encapsulated postscript. It is high resolution. It is vector. And this is a key word that you need to make sure you have scalable to any size. Let me say that again, scalable to any size. So make sure that you understand that um, EPS is, is kind of like, it's Adobe Illustrator file, file format, and it also comes from the old Corel Draw. I don't know if any of you have heard of Corel Draw before. It's a PC kind of old version of um, um, Illustrator. Okay, now this is more cartoon-like. I'll use those words to describe it. So it's going to be higher contrast. You see there's not a lot of gradients where you've got almost a, um, like a um, flat image. So these you see a lot with icons, um, a lot with um, logo designs, illustrations, and you can see on the image that's kind of toward the bottom left, do you see how like the tones in her skin are not like smooth? They're more um, hard edged where it transitions from the highlights to the shadows. Can you sort of see that? And then the background again is more um, direct color as opposed to like smooth transitions of color. All right, so that's a key feature of an EPS or a vector art 
versus what you would see in raster. Because raster would be a smoother transition of color tonality changes than you would see in an EPS document. Okay, uh, these will typically be used for signs, banners, billboards on Interstate 75. So let's, this would be a good example of what you would use an EPS for. You see this little icon for this little flower on the notepad. So if you had something like that and you wanted to put that on the side of a van uh, because you're gonna make a little bakery or a flower shop uh, and you wanna use this as your logo, I would create it in a vector um, application so that you can scale this to any size. So do you see how this is maybe a little bit bigger than the size of a quarter? And you'll see that. I can scale this to the side of a van or a truck, uh, a billboard, and it not lose any image quality because it is point-based or vector paths, okay? And that's P-A-T-H-S. I'm typing that in the, in the chat. So that's a key word for vector is paths, okay. Now, these I'm not gonna discuss in too much detail because these you should be familiar with. Hopefully most all of you have seen Word documents and PowerPoint. Now, Word documents are typically used for business forms. We'll use them for the resume. You're gonna use them for assignments that we start at the beginning of uh, the intro class. .docx is a native file that comes out of Word. PPTX is what comes out of PowerPoint. So PowerPoint is used for presentations, which is what I'm using today for this presentation. So typically in a, as a graphic designer, you're typically only gonna use Word for business documents, contracts, uh, letters, kind of more the business side. You would use PowerPoints for presentations. Everything else you're gonna be using different software for design and different file formats. Okay, is everybody good with those two things? Okay. So these are the file formats that I want you to know which are related to the software. So let me ask you this question and I just sort of told you the answer. So let's see if you were kind of, I guess, um, you know, if this was like being gelled into your brain and you're understanding what I'm saying. Who can explain to me what is a native file? Who wants to volunteer? What would you expect? Yeah, go ahead. You said the native file was, um, the doc was the programming with like regular, um, with like Google and the doc with an X is from Microsoft. So the native would be like the um, programming, like what okay. the program is and it's file um, registers. Okay, that's, that's very, um, close to yes, what that would be. Did somebody, somebody else was about to also add something? Uh, like uh, what application it's linked to, pretty much. Yeah, like that, yeah. application it's linked to. So yeah, so, okay, so that's, that's good. So what it means is that it's original to the application in which it was created. That's basically what a native file is. So yes, like you were saying, like with the programming code um, and it's tied or linked to the application itself. So that means you cannot create a Word document from any other source but Word, you know, the .docx. You can't create a PPTX from anything else but PowerPoint. So these are the file formats that you see here for Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop. So these are all the native files. So make sure you understand that. These are the native files for those applications. So when you start using Illustrator, you will save a native file out as a .ai. When you start using Photoshop, you will save a native file out as a .psd. So then anything else that you save out of those documents is no longer a native file, but it becomes an export file. Okay, the word export. So that means you can save a JPEG out of PSD, but it becomes an export. You can save a PDF out of InDesign, it becomes an export file. Uh, you can save an EPS out of an Illustrator file. So that becomes, you know, an export file. Does that make sense to you? So the native file, is exactly what Noah was saying is built 
right within the application. Okay, and it's like um, Amaya was saying, like basically the coding is attached to that application and then everything else is an, is an import or export. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now kind of make a note, we're not gonna go into a lot of detail on uh, true type fonts and open type fonts right now. We'll discuss this in more detail later, but this is dealing with fonts or type styles. So in some of your projects later, I'm gonna show you how to download fonts for your computers. You're gonna be able to start using different fonts and we're gonna talk about which fonts are better for which designs and which applications. So you want to understand the difference in these two when you start downloading. So TTF stands for true type font, which is an older font uh, format. OTF stands for open typeface, which is a newer option. Okay, so therefore any of these are going to hopefully hold quality, but the newer OTF will preserve the quality, uh, will have less pixelation, uh, it'll be smoother edges than the TTF will. So when you're looking at this, basically Adobe and Microsoft have come together and developed this OTF so that it is PC and Mac compatible. Most fonts will work either way, but sometimes with a TTF, it will work better on a Mac than a PC. OTF, the open typeface, will work across platforms. So just kind of make a note um, that also these are fully scalable. We'll talk about PostScript options later. Uh, but when you download your fonts for your projects that you're going to do eventually, when you download the fonts, sometimes you will get a TTF and an OTF. If you get both options, which one do you think you should choose? Noah, do you want to, which one do you think? Uh, open, open. open. Mm -hmm. Because it's one, it's, it goes across multiple platforms easier, right? It's a newer format. So I would choose the OTF. If you only get a TTF, then you only use the TTF. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Any questions about fonts real quick? Okay, now these are some that you should be familiar with. These are the ones I added new. So you may, if you completed this assignment last Friday, you may not have these in your um, file. So add these to your document. Okay, .mov is a native file. It comes out of iMovie. Uh, it comes out of whatever application that you create your file in. So I think there's a few applications that create .movs. I know iMovie is the one that I use most often. Okay, MP4 would be considered an import export file. So you know how in your Adobe Spark lesson, I asked you to create your Adobe Spark video and then I ask you to download it as an MP4 in order to upload it to Padlet. That is because it is a compressed file. So I use the word container. So think of it like that. So it takes the audio, it takes the video, it takes the graphics and it containerizes them. It takes all those little elements, puts them into a container to then package it and send it on its way. So you can send it to other um, applications, to other websites, to other social media. So again, MOV is QuickTime uh, available. It comes out of iMovie. It's a native file. MP4s are gonna be the import export options from those movie files. Okay, is everybody good with those? Okay, now SVG, this is a new one too that was not on your assignment from last Friday. SVG is a new file format that is becoming more popular and is starting to replace um, even some other vector graphic formats like PNGs. People are starting to use SVGs more often. Have y'all seen SVGs? 
around much. Okay, it's, it's starting to become more readily available. Um, it can be used for web and print for both. Um, Y'all seen the decals on the back of people's cars? Okay, you know, or like vinyl, like to where you have, um, and I'll show you this one, like that's on my, we have the capability to make these in here, you know, where you do the vinyl cutouts and you can put them on your Yetis or your bottles. You can do plastic cups. You can put it on cars or decals. Um, a lot of those are SVG files. Those are SVG uh, because they're vector, which means what? Scalable to any size. Remember, vector means you can take a small version and enlarge it and make it big, and you do not lose image quality. Um, SVG will also hold text. That's the reason I put the example of the dog with the text on there. So it will scale text uh, clean when you want to enlarge the file. So again, it can be used for websites or print. It can hold quality of fonts and graphics. But again, it's used more often for what I would consider line art or vector art, uh, more cartoonish type things that are flat or um, smoother edges. So again, not gradients and not a lot of uh, like, you would still use JPEGs for the photographic quality. Okay, now this was not on your sheet and it's not critical that you type this in. I just want you to kind of be familiar with it. Have any of you heard of zipped files or have you ever had to unzip files that are sent to you? Okay, a couple of you say yes. All right, so what a zip folder or file does is like if you have, let's say you do a photo shoot for a wedding or a graduation, homecoming, prom, you know how everybody wants, you know, a thousand photos, right? So let's say that you shoot photos for a wedding and you have 40 images that you want to send to your client. Okay, 40 images through an email is probably not the best option. Whereas if you take those 40 images and you compress them into a zip, then you can send that one zipped file. The client will open the zip file from the link or the website, depending on if you have it posted to your website or you send them an email. They click it, double click and unzip and then 40 photos pop out and they can view all of the photos from the photo shoot that they've completed. So zip is just a good way to kind of consolidate information. Okay, so now it's quiz time. Okay, everybody get your chat open. We got a couple of minutes left of class and I want you to answer some of these questions. So you can unmute. I want you to verbally answer. Okay, a couple of you, um, if you want to volunteer or else I'll call on you or you can type it uh, in the chat to everyone or you can privately message. Okay, so the first question is, let's do a quick review. What is a native file? Again, one more time. Amaya, you wanna go for it since you answered it before? Um, the native file is the, um, you just said it, the original file that I said it was the original file when you're um, that you can't change like the ending of it like DOCX mm -hmm. and so you can't correct. transfer it from anything else it has to be under PowerPoint correct. or Microsoft it's to the application yeah, it was just the words you were kind of looking for. So yeah, so original or native or created within the application, right? To the original application. So that's good. Yeah, you did good. Okay, so who wants to answer what is the difference between lossy and lossless? You can explain that to me real quick. Uh, Nathan. Lossy is that you lose some of your data and for lossless, you lose all of it. You would not use, you would not lose it, right? So lossy means you lose some data lossless means you would keep your data oh yeah. no that's good you, you got you got one of them perfect so that's good so basically just remember lossless means you lose you don't lose anything you lose less data okay so that just means you preserve it so that was good okay number three which file format will preserve transparent backgrounds which one will hold a transparent background Isn't it a raster? Uh, no. Is it?
it's going to be a vector. So which, which file format would be vector to preserve transparency? Now, Mario, I will say you can preserve transparency in some raster, um, some raster formats. That's not impossible. You do have those options. So that's not completely out of the question, but which one is known to preserve transparency? Wait, am I supposed to know like which or, or include that supports includes like GIFs and the PNG? It must it like answer like that or? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. So which one holds transparency? And it was one of the two you just said. GIFs, PNG, BMP, and I think it was TIFF, right? Yes, that's all correct. So the main one I want you to know that holds transparency is PNG, but all those others, yes. Okay. Okay. So which file format is the standard for print production and easily accessible to any user? The one that I told you to make sure you're familiar with that we're going to use most often. Which one was that? Was it PDF? PDF? Mm -hmm. That's right. PDF. Um, okay. Which one is used most often for photography? Was it like uh, JPEG or? JPEG, yep, that's it. Uh, which file format would best be used for animated graphics? Uh, Ivan, do you want to answer that? That what you just put in the chat was correct. Uh, GIF, mm -hmm. GIF or, or GIF, whatever. Okay, number seven, which file formats will maintain vector points? And this is, it can be several different ones, but who can tell me some of the ones that will maintain vector points? Which ones are vector? Xander, you wanna say that one? SVG files. Uh -huh. That's correct. SVG is vector. What else? Okay, I have crickets. Okay, AI is uh, vector. Uh, PNG is vector. So those are also, those will also, and EPS, those will all support vector graphics or vector points. Okay, number eight, which file format is best used for web graphics? So which ones would you primarily upload to the web? And this is several different ones. And y'all can message in the chat as well. And web is typically gonna, is, is web gonna be raster or vector? raster. Mm -hmm. I saw somebody's mouth move. So, okay. So who's got some formats for web? We're about to run out of time. We've got about a minute. Okay. Those are going to be JPEGs. Uh, you can upload MOVs, MP4s. Um, typically those are going to be for web graphics. Okay. So what's the best file format to export a video file? Y'all should know that one. Yep, what Michael just said, which is MP4. He said that in the chat. Uh, what should you use to send several files at one time through email? Zip. Yep, okay, all right, let's head out then. Everybody turn your cameras on. I'm gonna stop recording. Um, give me a wave. Y'all did good, did y'all learn something today? Hopefully y'all know more about file formats than you did. Will this be in the, um, the classroom, the CTLS? Eventually, this will be posted. I want you to turn in your assignments first um, and let me check what you've got. And then I will share this with you uh, later this week. Yeah. Okay. I want y'all to do the hard work first. Okay. All right. Bye. Oh, um, I forgot to mention. Don't, if y'all need any extra help, I'm available to, on Wednesday mornings if y'all need any help. I forgot to mention that. All right.